الحمد لله وكفى والصلاة والسلام على عباده الذين استفاء خصوصا على أفضلهم وخاتم النبيين محمد الأمين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد فاعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ألف لام ذلك الكتاب لا ريب فيه هدى للمتقين الذين يؤمنون بالغيب ويقيمون الصلاة ومما رزقناهم ينفقون والذين يؤمنون بما أنزل إليك وما أنزل من قبلك وبالآخرة هم يوقنون أولئك على هدى من ربهم وأولئك هم المفلحون صدق الله العظيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقهوا قولي اللهم ربنا الهمنا رشدنا واعذنا من شرور انفسنا اللهم ارنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه وارنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه اللهم وفقنا لما تحب وترضى امين يا رب العالمين as i told you in the introductory lecture we are now beginning with the first grouping of the surahs the makki surah wa surah al fatiha which we have already studied now the madani part of this first group consists of four surahs and consisting of two pairs of two surahs each surah al baqara surah al imran they are a pair and that is evident from the fact that both start with the letters alif lam mim then surah al nisa surah al maida they are a pair they start straight off ya ayyuhal ladina amanu ya ayyuhan nas this is how surah al nisa and surah al maida start so this is the first pair of the madani surahs now regarding surah al baqara please note This is the largest and the biggest surah of the Quran. It comprises nearly two and a half parts. It has two eighty-six ayat, divided into forty rukus. And this surah al-Mubaraka, not only regarding its size, it's one of the most important surahs of the Quran. Rather, I should say, the most important surah of the Quran, because. it has been said so by the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam himself there is a hadith in which he said li kulli shay'in sanamun wa sanamu salam alquran surah albaqarah everything has its top highest place and we may say every phenomenon has a climax and the top or the climax of quran is surah albaqarah Now these are the wordings of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. This surah, I have given it a name, Surah al-Ummatain, Surah of two ummas. The two ummas, that is the present Muslim ummah, that is the Muslims, and the former Muslim ummah, the Bani Israel. This surah can be divided just as we. Listen to the Hadith of Qudsi. Qasam tu salat a baini wa baina abdi nisfain. Surah Al Fatiha divisible into two absolutely equal parts. Here again we have nearly equal parts, halves of Surah Al Baqarah. First part that comprises of eighteen rukus and one fifty two ayat. Here the address is basically. to the former muslim ummah that is bani israel out of the 18 rukus more than 10 you know they are in direct address ya bani israel askuru ni'mati allati anamtu alaykum wa afu bi ahdi yufi bi ahdikum wa ya ya farhabun this is the beginning of the fifth section fifth ruku of this surah and in the 15th section again ya bani israel askuru ni'mati allati anamtu alaykum wa anni faddaltukum ala alamin It's a continuous address to the former Muslim Ummah. In the first four rukus, they are 
some preliminary discussions and as we shall see inshallah very soon actually they are a summary of the whole of the makki quran because two third of the quran had been revealed already when surah al baqarah was being revealed it is madani surah and this is the first madani surah the time of its revelation is beginning with the hijra till the time just before ghazwat ul badr so that is actually about 16 or 17 months this surah was revealed bit by bit part by part during 16 or 17 months extending from just after hijra to just before ghazwat ul badr the battle of badr so this is the first badri surah that way but two third of the quran had already been revealed that is the makki surahs so actually because allah subhanahu wa taala has placed this surah in the very beginning of the quran a gist and a summary of the teachings of the makki quran is given in four rukus in the very beginning of this surah then the four remaining rukus of this first part they are tahwili because you will find that the change in the direction of tibla from jerusalem to makka that is discussed in those four rukus and that was actually a symbol that the position that was held by the former muslim ummah bani israil for 2000 years now they are deposed from that position they were the representatives of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on earth for 2000 long years now they are deposed and the new muslim ummah based on the prophethood of and messengerhood of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam now this has taken the place this sur this this new ummah it is being installed in place of the former muslim ummah that is why the direction of the qibla that is changed from jerusalem to makkah then the second part second half of this surah it comprises of 22 rukus but the number of ayat is 134 in the first part 18 rukus but ayat 152 in the second half although the rukus number is greater 22 but the number of the ayat 134 so actually they go to balance each other and that is how i am saying that they nearly balanced half half and half you know the this division is nearly balanced in that second portion the address is to the muslim ummah exclusively and two subjects are being discussed number one the sharia because the sharia is revealed after hijra before hijra there was no sharia actually no law nothing had been made farz except you know salah and that was also made farz only a year or so before hijra there was no zakah there was no saum there was nothing was declared haram you know neither you know liquor was declared haram nor interest was declared haram no sharia so sharia actually was revealed in the badri surahs and in surah al baqara we find the blueprint the basic principles the blueprint of the sharia of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and this goes to develop into surah al nisa and then final actually final sharia has taken the form the sharia of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam in surah al maida so actually the legal the legal injunctions of the quran and secondly jihad fi sabilillah infaq fi sabilillah qital fi sabilillah these are the two subjects discussed in the second half of this surah and there it's the address to the muslim muslim ummah now with this introduction brief introduction we start the first two rukus of this surah are very important if we keep it view as i told you tawilul khas when they were revealed what was meant and what was understood basically by these wordings by these ayat when they were revealed at that time and then we shall have the generalized view that if we just leaving away the the historical background if we if we focus our attention on the wordings then the generalized inferences then we shall discuss about them alif lam mim these are the isolated letters of the quran which appear in the beginning of 29 surahs of the quran in three surahs only single letter comes qaf noon qaf wal quran al majid noon wal qalam wa ma yasturun sad wal quran al zikr 
Then in some there are two letters, Hamim, Taha, Yasin. In some there are three letters, Alif Lam Mim, Alif Lam Ra. And in some there are four letters, Alif Lam Mim Ra, Alif Lam Mim Saad. And only two, there are five. Kaf, Ha, Ya, An, Saad, Ha, Mim, An, Sin, Kaf. And the meanings of these letters nobody knows. They are a secret between Allah and His Messenger. Although much has been said about these letters. But the consensus, general consensus is that nobody knows the real meanings with sure. There are certain judgments people have guessed something, but nothing definite. You can't be sure of those meanings. Zalikal kitab bafi. This is the book of Allah. Al kitab. This is the book. What does it mean? The book of Allah. La rai bafi. There's no doubt in it. No doubt in it about it's being revealed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then there is no doubt in its contents. Its contents are also about doubt. And its revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is also about doubt. Hudal lil muttaqeen. This is the guidance for the God-fearing. But I discussed this word taqwa in my Sunday lecture. Taqwa, you know, although generally piety, Godliness, holiness, different words are used, but actually meaning that to save yourself. Muttaqim, people who want to save themselves. Since what? From what? From the fire of hell, number one, displeasure of Allah, number two. And basically, they have a moral sense within them. And they want to avoid and save themselves from evil. If this moral sense is active within them, then actually they will always be in search of the truth, in search of what we shall do. Those people who had given those, you know, who had prayed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, ihdina sirat al-mustaqeem, sirat al-lazina anamta alayhim, it was their desire, it was their own search. They wanted to have the guidance. Now actually this is the relationship between Surah Al-Fatiha and Surah Al-Baqarah. You ask for guidance, hudal lil-muttaqeem, this is the guidance. The guidance is being given to you. And these are the do's and do's. Do these things and don't do these things. Go this way. Don't go this way. There's danger this way. This is the safety. This way you are safe. So actually this guidance is given here for the lil muttaqeen. But as I discussed in that lecture, although we find in the 23rd section of this very surah, Hudal lil nas, this has the guidance for all humanity. But you know, only those people will be able to avail of his guidance who have in themselves the search for truth and guidance, who want to have guidance. People do, who don't want to have any guidance, they will not be able to avail themselves of the guidance that Quran is giving. If somebody is not hungry, he will not, you know, look towards any food. This, that food might be very nourishing and very tasty, but he has no hunger. He can't take it. So actually there should be a hunger, then only you know what food is and how valuable it is, how much I need it. That is actually the need for guidance is taqwa, because you want to save yourself from going astray. You want to save yourself from evils. You want to save from self from doom on the doomsday. If that desire is there only, then you will be able to avail of the guidance of the Quran. And who are those muttaqeen? Allazina yuminuna bil ghayb. Those who believe in the unseen, who know that the reality lies beyond the realm of our senses. Our senses, you know, they are very limited. And the real, the all the basic realities, they lie beyond. Just as Confucius, you know, a very famous thinker of China, he has been reported to have said, there's nothing more real than what cannot be seen and that, that there is nothing more certain than what cannot be heard. Things which are not visible by three, these eyes, which cannot be heard through these ears, they are the most real things. Actually what we have this within the realm of our senses, this is a very shallow, superficial part of reality. So this is the basic thing that if somebody, he denies, no, there is nothing beyond our perception then he will not be able to avail of the guidance of this Qur'an. Only such a person who understands, who knows that our senses, these, you know, they can reach, 
but to, very, to a very li- limited extent. The reality lies beyond it. يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْغَيْبِ وَيُقِيمُونَ الصَّلَاةِ And then they establish prayers. Because that reality, the Al-Haqq, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, now you should have some contact with him, some communication with him. And to have a regular communication with him, you must establish prayers. وَبِمَّا رَزَقْنَاهُمْ يُنْفِقُونَ And whatsoever we have given them, they spend out of it. Spend out for charity, for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for the for the spreading of the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for making the deen of Allah supreme. And those who believe in what has been revealed and sent down to you, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and not only you, but they believe also on what was sent before. They believe in Torah also, they believe in Injil also, they believe in Zabur also, and they believe that the prophets have been given these revelations and guidances before Quran also. Here you know we find the word is changed. Not you menun, but you kenun. About the hereafter, they are convinced, they are sure. They are sure that this life is not all human life. The real human life is in the hereafter. Death is not the end of our existence, it's just the gate. Towards the eternity. Because after death, you know, there is going to be resurrection. And after that resurrection, It's eternity. Eternal existence. So actually death is the gate to eternity. Actually they have, they are, they are convinced, they have the yaqeen. This Allah is very important here. These are the people who are on the guidance from their Lord. They are already on the guidance. And they will be increased in their guidance. But they are already in the guidance. And they are the people who will be successful. Who will reach their final goal. That is falah. Now please note here. What these ayat denote is. That because Quran was being revealed. For last 12 years, before the revelation of these ayat, there were people who had taken the guidance of Quran. They were transformed, their characters, their seerah. They have been, you know, and they were practically present. These ayat are practically pointing towards those people. They are the people. There is Abu Bakr. Look to him. He is the fruit of this Quran. You know, every, every tree is known by the fruit it bears. The guidance of this Quran has produced a, a jama'ah, a group, a community of people. Like Abu Bakr, Omar, Osman, Talha, Zubair. Go and see. They are the people who have benefited themselves with the guidance from the guidance of this Quran. And the Quran, you know, has produced a certain community who have these characters. Allazina yuminuna bil ghayb. وَالْيُقِيبُونَ الصَّلَاةِ وَمِمَّا رَزَقْنَاهُمْ يُنْفِقُونَ وَالَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِمَا أُنزِلَ إِلَيْكَ وَمَا أُنزِلَ مِنْ قَبْلِكَ وَبِالْآخِرَةِ هُمْ يُوقِنُونَ أُولَٰئِكَ عَلَىٰ هُدًى مِّن رَّبِّهِمْ وَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْمُفْلِحُونَ So this is actually the ta'weel al-khas. When these ayat were revealed, as if these ayat were pointing towards the people whom Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had prepared by the hard work of 12 years, their training, their tazkiyah, their tarbiyah, and through this, the teaching of this Quran, hikmah. the teaching of this Quran and hikmah has produced it, a people, a community. And these are these people who, whose qualities and attributes are given here. But if you infer generally, what will be the inference? If anybody wants actually to avail of the guidance of the Quran, he must take to this path first. He must produce in himself the qualities that are being given here. As if they are the precondition to avail the guidance of the Quran. If you want to tread on the path that Quran wants you to tread, these are the fundamental conditions. Rather, we should say preconditions that you have to fulfill in order to avail yourself fully with the guidance of the Quran. Now, the second group. Three types of people are discussed in these two rukus. Second, 
ان For them, it's equal. An zartahum, whether you 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 warn them, am lam tum zirhum, or you don't warn them, la you menun, they are not going to believe. Now, actually, here also Quran is pointing towards certain people. This is not general. So many people were kufar, had not become Muslims till these ayat were revealed, and they became Muslims later on. So it cannot be a generalized meaning. Actually, it's a particular group. Those people whom Muhammad Sallallahu had preached for 12 years at Makkah, and they had understood the message of the Quran, and from the depths of their heart they believed that this is correct, but they didn't want to accept it due to their haughtiness, due to their takabur, due to their hurur, because you know they were proud. They didn't want to follow Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Why should we follow Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam? Are we inferior to Muhammad? No. Then you know this is actually when they had decided, oh Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, it is equal. It's equally fruitless or equally without any result. Whether you preach them anymore, whether you go on warm, warming, warning them anymore, or you stop preaching to them or and warning them. La yumenun, they are not going to believe. They have decided to remain kafir. They will not accept you. Khatam Allahu ala kulubihim. Allah subhanahu wa taala has put a seal on their hearts, wa ala samihim, and on their ears, their hearing, wa ala absarihim jishawa, and on their eyes, there is a curtain. There is covering on their eyes. Walahum azabun azim. And for them is waiting a very big torment. Now this again, please note those people to whom preaching was done. The message of Quran had been conveyed to them year after year. Twelve years, Muhammad took Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam at Makkah. Abu Jahl, Abu Lahab. It is not that they didn't, they didn't understand. They understood Quran was in their own language. And they knew Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam from the very birth. Abu Lahab at least knew him from his very birth. But you know they had decided not to accept him due to their haughtiness, their proudness. So actually now such people they will not avail of your guidance. They will not avail of the guidance of the Quran. They will not benefit O Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam from your preaching, from your warning. So it's equal to them, and because due to their refusal. To accept the truth, Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala had punished them by putting a seal on their hearts. This seal is not in the beginning. This seal is put only when somebody refrains from accepting the truth, recognizing the truth that this is true. His heart tells him this is true. Accept it, and he doesn't accept. Why? Because of proudness, or because of certain such reasons, haughtiness. Then Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, as a, as a punishment, puts His seal on His heart. Now He cannot see because there is a curtain before their eyes. They cannot hear because their hearing is also sealed. And now their hearts are closed to for any guidance. Wamin al Nas. Now the third degree, third type of people. Wamin al Nas. Man yakulu aman na billahi wa bil yomi la akhir wa baahum bi mu'minin. And there are from among people. Who say with their tongues, with their mouths, "Amen, na billah." We believe in Allah. Wa bil yomil akhir, and the last day, the day of judgment. Wa maahum bi mu'minin, and they are not mu'min. They are not real believers. They profess to believe. They claim to believe. They say with loud words, "We believe in Allah. We believe in the hereafter, in the day of judgment." But they are not believers. Now, who are they? First of all, please note. They are actually two categories who are being referred here, without giving them any name. Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala has not given them any title, but as far as we can understand, 
देर आर टू टाइप ऑफ पीपल हुआ बींग डिस्कस्ड हियर जनरली पीपल थिंक दैट दे आर ओनली मुनाफिकीन दिपोक्राइट्स बट एक्चुअली हिपोक्राइट्स एज वेल एज द ज्यूज ऑफ मदीना बोथ आर इंक्लूडेड इन दिस इन दिस कैटेगरी एंड एक्चुअली हिपोक्राइट्स वर ऑल्सो पीपल अंडर द इन्फ्लुएंस ऑफ द ज्यूज ऑफ मदीना दे वर अंडर देयर इन्फ्लुएंस एंड दे वर दयातीन people like which we shall very presently read in the, in the, these in these ayat also the word by the khala ila shayateen him qalu inna ma'akum inna ma nahnu mustahzi'un so actually this description as you say in english free to whom it fits this is a narration and it fits two groups of people of that time number one the jews number two the munafiqun the hypocrites who said they were muslims and but they were not muslims they were not mu'mins why jews because here you find yaqulu amanna billahi wa bil yawmil akhir not bil rasul here the wordings are only that they say we believe in allah and believe in hereafter but not in the rasul we don't believe in the messenger at least this is not they are saying and that was the position of the jews because we believe in allah and you you also believe in allah we also believe in allah you also believe in unity of allah we also believe in unity of allah you also believe in the resurrection we also believe in the resurrection you also believe in the in the hereafter in the heaven and hell we also believe in the hereafter and the hell and the heaven so we are also mu'mins you must accept us as believers that was their claim and it's very noteworthy that out of the three basic imaniyat three basic themes of iman only two have been mentioned wa min an-nas man yaqulu amanna billahi wa bil yawmil akhir wa ma hum mu'minin they are not mu'mins and in the same way when we shall read the description this is this fits you know the munafiqun of madina also because they also actually they doubted about the messengership of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam we find in the quran at different places that they said for example why this this wars have been started battles have been started there's no express injunction in the quran laula nuzilat suratun why not a surah has been has been revealed in the quran and only on this demand of theirs we find that suratul qital was revealed surah to muhammad or suratul qital in the 26th part which contains a very express injunction for going to war against the kuffar so actually they were not very sure about the messengership or prophethood of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam they were also also they, they their claim was iman billah iman bil akhir actually they took muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam not very seriously and to obey muhammad personally that had become most difficult for them so these both groups are included here if you keep in view the tawilul khas the groups who are in the background of these ayat but when we shall infer generally this will fit every munafiq for all times to come because as a rule please understand whenever there is some ideological call when there is some revolutionary movement started based on some ideology you will always find three types of people there are people who accept the ideology at its face value and then they are ready to die for it live for it to do whatever it demands then there are people who are opposed to that ideology they oppose it clearly openly tooth and nail and then there is the third group always who want to support the ideology but keep safe themselves they want to play safe they want they don't want to sacrifice their their belongings or their lives they want to be safe and you know to be to keep their money with them and everything you say they they, they don't want to take risks and they actually they want to do something good but it should happen itself not that we have to do anything for it and we have to sacrifice anything for it so these are the munafiqun the third type of people who will always be found with every ideological movement every revolutionary movement people who believe it take it at its face value they plunge into deep waters risking everything people who refuse to accept and who oppose it to the nail clearly and people who are in between la ilaha illallah wa la ilaha illallah 
They are neither on that side, neither on this side. They are somewhat on this side, somewhat on that side. Meaning thereby, neither on that side, neither on this side. So these are the munafiqun, and this is the third group which is being discussed here. وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَقُولُ آمَنَّا بِاللَّهِ وَبِالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ وَمَا هُمْ بِمُؤْمِنِينَ And they are not believers. They are not the real moments. يُخَادِعُونَ اللَّهَ وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا They try to, th- to deceive. يُخَادِعُونَ I've added the word try. They are trying to deceive Allah and the people who believe, the real believers. مُخَادَعَةَ This is Baba Mufa'ala. This is trying against each other. So yukhadi'oon Allah, yukhadi'oon Allah wa al-lazina amanu. They are trying to deceive Allah and people who believe, the moments. Wa ma yakhda'oona illa anfusahum. And they are not deceiving anybody except themselves. They are deceiving themselves. When they claim they are moments, they are deceiving themselves. When they think that they can please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through this verbal attestation only, well they are wrong. They are deceiving themselves. وَمَا يَشْعُرُونَ But they perceive it not. They have not the sense that they are deceiving themselves. وَلَا يَشْعُرُونَ فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ مَرَضٌ In their hearts, there is a disease. There is an ailment. That ailment is of doubt. Shak, rab, doubt. And this is actually, this shak and rab, then it goes to develop into nifaq, into hypocrisy. فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ مَرَضٌ فَزَادَهُمُ اللَّهُ مَرَضَا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has increased them in their disease. This is the rule of Allah. This is the sunnah of Allah. This is the habit of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you take to the right path, He will help you in proceeding forward on that right path. If you choose the wrong path, He will help you. Go ahead. Further and further. And if you are in between, He will leave you there. It's your own choice. Imma shakiram wa imma kafura. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given the choice to you, to me, to every human being. When the decision he makes, Allah makes that way easy for him to proceed further and further. All the difficulties of the right path, they are made easier for him. All the big evils of the wrong path, for those people who choose to, to take, take that wrong path for themselves, then they are made easy for him when they go after one big evil to the another bigger evil, and then to the still bigger evil, they go forward. So actually this is the habit of Allah. فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ مَرَضٌ فَزَادَهُمُ اللَّهُ مَرَضًا Allah has increased them in their disease. وَلَهُمْ عَزَابٌ عَلِيمٌ And there, for them is a very painful torment. بِمَا كَانُوا يَكْسِبُونَ On the basis of, because of the lie that they had been telling. Because they were saying we are moments, they were not moments. This was the, the lie that they were saying, they were telling. That was very important. This third category of people, as I told you, one pe- type of people who accept that dawah, that call, that ideology, and then they plunge into deep waters, risking everything. Other one, they have rejected the ideology, Rather, they have decided to oppose it, and they are opposing it to and nail. And then this third group is in between. They want to make peace between evil and good, between batil and haq. They want to make peace between them. Because if there is a clash between the batil and the haq, between the truth and the falsehood, if there is a clash, there is going to be bloodshed, there is going to be loss of life, loss of property, loss of conveniences, everything. So actually they want peace not for the sake of their truth, but for themselves, to save themselves. That is why they used, they wanted to say, that why are we going to war? It's no use going to war against Kuffar. Why not go on preaching and preaching and teaching and teaching? Well, we can, we can preach Islam. We can teach Islam to the people. Why Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has taken this way? He, has sent, he started sending small groups of armies, small groups, obstructing the way of the caravans, of the Quraysh. What war? Why? This will lead to bloodshed. This will lead to war, to battles. We, don't, we shouldn't do it. We should make peace. Now you, this, this, this character, you must read between the lines. 
then be true muslims now obey him in every respect when you have accepted him now you have to obey him why you know this difference of opinion this is actually mischief this is fasad la tusadu fil dar there is a party you are breaking the discipline of the party this party must be disciplined bunyanu marsus inna allah yuhibbul ladina yuqatiluna fi sabilihi saffan kaanahum bunyanu marsus you should be like you know a fortified wall not your not different people individuals you know so this group should be very much integrated and why are you making this fasad and they, the reply was qalu innama nahnu muslihun no we want to make peace muhammad wants to make war sallallahu alaihi wasallam and we want to obstruct this war mongering we want to have peace ala innahum humul mufsidun Now this is the decree of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Listen, they are the mischief mongers, wala kila ya shurud, but they don't have the perception. They perceive not, but they are the mischief mongers. Why? Because actually, whenever on this earth there is some system which is not the system of Deen of Allah, this is fasad. Although there might be all amn. all peace apparent peace but actually when this is not the law of allah which is governing this place it is in rebellion against allah subhanahu wa taala this is fasad zahar al fasad fil barr wal bahr bima kasabat yad al nas this is fasad this is rebellion against the rightful ruler the rightful owner of this universe is allah subhanahu wa taala he is the only rightful ruler and if anybody else any other law is ruling it is rebellion so this rebellion has to be set under it has to be controlled it has to be dealt with and for dealing with this rebellion putting it down you need a party strong party powerful party disciplined party now if you are if you are giving making injuries to the discipline of that party you are weakening that party you are you are abetting this system actually this fasad So Quran says, "Allah in the humble Muftidul, by breaking the discipline of the Muslim party of His Bullah of the party of Allah and Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they are actually they are the mischief mongers. They are abetting and supporting this fasad on earth. Allah in the humble Muftidul, and Allah in the Shurul. By the Aqil Allah, Aminu Kama Man Nas. And when it is said to them, you should also believe, just as the others have believed. You look to Abu Bakr, look to Omar, look to Saad Ibn Maaz. Look to Saad ibn Abada, رضي الله تعالى عنه وجمعين. They are the believers. Why don't you follow them? Why don't you take to their example? What did they say? Very interesting. By the Aqila lahum aminu kama aman nas kalu anu minu kama aman sufaha. They said, Should we believe just as these fools are believing? They thought they are fools. They are fanatics. They are risking everything. These are fools who have left their homes and hearts. and they have come over from makkah to madina are they are they you know wise people they don't look to whatever is injurious to them whatever is harmful to them whatever is beneficial for them they have just migrated from makkah leaving their families their home not only their homes and hearts their families at the mercy of the wolves of makkah they have come over here so they are fools actually we are not fools like them we are not going to risk our lives and properties and our wealth we are not going to that, to take that path aba iza qila lahum aamanu kama aamana suf a aamanu kama aamana nas qalu anu minu kama aamana sufaha ala innahum humus sufaha walakin la ya'lamun listen to it harkan they are the fools but they don't have the perception they don't have the knowledge abu bakr is not a fool umar is not a fool and saad ibn ibada and saad ibn maaz they are not fools these are fools ubay abdullah ibn ubay is the biggest fool of madina 
and the people who are like him people who are obeying him people who are taking his part they are the fools because actually they don't know what is really good and beneficial for them because real life is the life hereafter and this is injurious for them because we read in surah an-nisa in the munafiqin fi darq al-asfal min an-nar these munafiqin will be in the lowest part of hell in the lowest section of hell they will be placed so actually they are fools wa idha laqul ladina amanu qalu amanna and when they meet the people who believe really believe they say we also believe wa idha khalau ila shayatinihim now this is a word please note when they are in privacy with their devils with their chiefs well these are the chiefs the, the jews of madina the munafiqin were actually they were in close liaison with the jews of madina wa idha khalau ila shayatin in qalu inna ma'akum they are the same we are with you don't think although we have openly declared ourselves to be muslims to be with the muslims to be with muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam but this is all we are making mockery of them we are with you really we are we have not left your side we are with you wa idha laqul ladina amanu qalu amanna wa idha khalau ila shayatinihim qalu inna ma'akum inna ma nahnu mustahzi'un we are only mocking we are these fools you know these moments they are fools and when you are making a laughing stock for them allah yastahzi'u bihim now this is the decree of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allah mocks at them wa yamudduhum fi tughyanihim again the same divine habit or divine rule or the sunnah of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala whichever path you take allah makes it easy for you wa yamudduhum fi tughyanihim ya mahul allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives them increase in their wrong doings permits them going more and more in the direction of that evil and wrong path that they have taken and decided and chosen for themselves ulaika alladhina ashtaraw ulaika alladhina ashtaraw dalalata bil huda they are the people who have purchased error falsehood in exchange for guidance very beautiful words now guidance of the quran came to them now they have two options either accept the guidance of the quran or the opposite of it that's the falsehood that is batil that is error that is sin that is disobedience to allah actually now they have given away the guidance of quran guidance of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and taken for themselves accepting for themselves they have exchanged the guidance for zalala for the error the falsehood fama rabihat tijaratuhum and this trade of theirs it has not benefited them at all this is the the sort of tafsir from allah subhanahu wa taala a commentary from allah subhanahu wa taala ulaika alladhina ashtaru dalalata bil huda fama rabihat tijaratuhum wa ma kanu muhtadin and they are not going to reach the destiny they cannot have now the guidance because they have gone very far on this path of nifaq and munafiqah masaluhum ka masal alladhi istawqada nara now there are two similes here and there are two opinions one opinion is that the both these similes are regarding this third category the in between people neither this side nor this side la ilaha illa wa la ilaha illa muzabzabina ba nazalik neither the believers nor opposing apparently or openly in between and the both the you know parables or both this these uh, similitudes they are about this very people some are very deep in this quality of of uh, hypocrisy and some are shallow but the opinion which i hold and i agree with the people who think that way that is that the first simile is for the kuffar and the second simile is for the munafiqeen for the kuffar we read these ayat inna alladhina kafaru sawaun alayhim ma anzartahum am lam tunzirum la yu'minun khatam allahu ala qulubihim wa ala sam'ihim wa ala absarihim rishawa wa lahum adhabun azim for them now there is a misal a similitude a similitude 
مسل ہوم کا مسل لائکنس از ایز دی لائکنس آف ون ہو کنڈل دے فائر ناؤ دس از ایکچولی اے سچویشن وچ یو کین امیجن اٹ کامنلی ہیپن ٹو دی عرب پیپل ون دے یوز ٹو ٹریول ان دی ڈیزرٹ ناؤ اے کیروان از ٹریولنگ ڈیورنگ دی نائٹ اینڈ دے یوز ٹو ٹریول ڈیورنگ دی نائٹ موسٹلی بیکاز دی ڈیز ور ویری ہاٹ ون کوڈنٹ ٹیک یو نو ٹو ٹریول ان دی ڈے ٹائم سو ڈیورنگ دی نائٹ اینڈ اٹ ڈڈ سم تھائم ہیپن دیٹ دے لاس دی وے now they are lost where we are in darkness and in that darkness somebody takes the courage gathers some timber and then you know kindles the fire now they can see where they are they were about where are we but at this moment something happens to a group of people that their sight is gone so they are again in the darkness before that fire there was darkness outside although their own sights were intact but now the mahal the environment the surroundings are enlightened but their sight is gone so they are again in the darkness this is the position of those actually muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam kindled the fire and light of hidayah but there were certain people who out of jealousy out of their haughtiness they didn't like to see the light of the day so actually their their sight was was taken away by allah subhanahu wa taala and now they are groping in the darkness summun bukmun umyun fahum la yarjun this is the likeness of the people of the second group inna alladhina kafaru sawaun alayhi ma anzartahum wa lam tunzirum la yu'minun khatam allah ala qulubihim wa ala samihim wa ala absarihim bishawa wa lahum azabun azim مسلهم كمثل الذي استوقد النار their likeness is to the likeness of a one person who kindled a fire فلما اضاءت ما حوله and when it lighted all around him ذهب الله بنورهم الله took away their sights وتركهم في ظلمات لا يبصرون and now left them in the darknesses they cannot see anything سم بكم عمي فهم لا يرجعون they are deaf they are dumb they are blind and they are not going to return they cannot return don't hope o muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam or you o muslim that any one of them will ever return to the path of allah because now allah subhanahu wa taala has taken away their sights khatam allah ala qulubihi wa ala sami wa ala farid bishawa so i think that this simile is for that group and for the munafiqin of second simile o kasayyib min as sama or the similitude of a rainstorm fi hi zulumatun wa ra'du wa barq there is a rainstorm from the from the sky wherein there is darkness and thunder and lightning yaj'aluna asabi'ahum fi adhanihim min as-sawa'iq hadar al-mawt they are putting their fingers in their ears saving themselves from death due to the stunning thunder clap they think that this sound will take their hearing away and then maybe they die out of it kasayyib min as-sama'i fihi zulumat wa ra'du wa barq yajaluna asabihum fi adhanihim min as-sawa'iq hadar al-mawt wallahu muhitun bil kafirin and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has already encompassed and encircled these kuffar where when where where can they go they are within the grip of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they can cannot go anywhere they cannot run away from allah subhanahu wa taala yaqadu al barq yaqtafu absarahum the lightning almost is near to snatch their sights kullama adalahum mashawfi whenever there is some light they can see something the lightning lightning for a time for a moment they have seen the environment they start going in the direction mashawfi they they walk a few steps waiza azlama alayhim qamu and when there is darkness upon them they stand walau sha allah la zahaba bi sam'ihim wa absarihim absarihim and had allah decided or decreed he would have taken away from them their sight and hearing both in allah ala kulli shay'in qadeer verily allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all powerful he has all authority he can do anything he likes now just 
have some thought about this simile. You know, whenever there is some revolutionary dava, revolutionary movement, there are difficulties. You are called to do your duties in face of difficulties and risks. There are risks of life, risks of wealth. Now you, you may be, you, you may have to suffer and you may have to give up your careers. You may have to give up and wind up your businesses because that is, that has been the requirement of every revolutionary struggle. Now these people who are in between, they are belonging to the category who want to do something but without any harm to themselves. They don't want to take any risk to their life, their wealth, their property and so on. So what happens whenever during the movement there, are, there comes a time when there is no immediate risk. There is no call to go to war, for example, during the Madani period. Whenever there was a call to go to war for any battle, then they were, you know, in a very big trouble. How to save themselves? What, you know, how to apologize? How to get leave from that? But whenever there is all the conditions are normal, nothing very risky affair, then they can, you know, walk with the Muslims. We are also Muslims. And they, they join the Muslims in congregations. They talk loudly about their Islam and Iman. They, take, they make tall claims about their sincerity. But when there is a difficult time, time of trial and tribulation, then you know they go down and their courage is gone. So that is the condition portrayed in this similitude. That whenever there is some light, they see something, they can go. They, they take a few steps. They go ahead. But then again, when there is darkness, there is again difficulty, there is again risk for life or property or wealth, they again stand and they don't move. So this is the condition of those people about whom the description we have already seen. There are from among peoples who claim that they are Mormons, they believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and they believe in the life hereafter, in the day of judgment, but actually they don't believe. It's a superficial claim that they are making. It's only a verbal attestation that they are doing, or they are making a total false claim, they are like the Jews. So this description fits both of them. And they were in close association with each other. Actually, this munafiqat, and you know munafiqeen, they were like an undergrowth. You know, there are big trees, tall trees. Under those big trees, there is the undergrowth which we call bushes. So these munafiqeen were like the undergrowth of the Jews. They were the established people, three established tribes. They were very influential. They were very wealthy. They were, you know, educated people. They had the book, they had the law, they had the, they had Torah. They had people, learned people within them. So actually this Munafiqeen, this third category was an undergrowth under, under that Jews. And this is the description of this character. And when we generalize it, always with every revolutionary call and movement, you will find three types of people. People who accept the call at its face value. And then they die for it, they live for it. They take every risk for it. They are ready to sacrifice their all belongings, even their lives. People who are opposed to it, tooth and nail, openly, because they are the people whose vested interests are threatened by the revolutionary party or the revolutionary dawa. They oppose it tooth and nail. And there is always a third group which likes that something good should happen, but they are not ready to sacrifice anything for that. They want to play safe, to keep safe. There is a very important and very beautiful similitude in Surah Al-Hajj also. I told you Surah Al-Hajj, you know, that is in between Makki and Madani Surahs. In Surah Al-Hajj there is an ayah, وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَعْبُدُ اللَّهَ عَلَىٰ حَرْفٍ There are from among people who want to worship Allah, but keeping, them, keeping themselves on the sides. They don't want to plunge the main current. If there is khair, 
if there is safety, if there is, you know, all the sureties and everything is okay, it manna bihi, he is also satisfied. He is also going along with the mu'mineen. وَإِنَ سَابَتُ فِتْنَةُ لِنْقَلَبَ عَلَى وَجْهِ And whenever there is some trial, tribulation, when there is a period of testing, when there is a call for sacrifice, for spending for the cause of Allah, a call for going to the battlefield for the cause of Allah, in قَلَبَ عَلَى وَجْهِهِ They fall down on their faces, fall down on the ground on their faces. خَسِرَتْ دُنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةِ This is actually the real loss, loss of this world also, and real loss of the Akhirah. ذَلِكَ هُوَ الْخُسْرَانُ الْمُبِينَ And this is the real loss, this is the real danger to which a man is putting himself. Let us proceed to the first ayah of the third section. يَا أَيُّهَا النَّاسُ عَبُدُوا رَبَّكُمُ الَّذِي خَلَقَكُمْ وَالَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ Instead of giving you the translation, let me give you the introduction to the third and fourth sections. These two sections of this surah, as I told you in the beginning, they give you a gist and a summary of number one, the call of Quran. What's the call of Quran? Number one. And number two, the basic philosophy of Quran. All these subjects have been discussed in detail in the Makki surahs. But you know, as I told you, that because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed a Madani surah in the very beginning of the Mus'haf. The gist and summary of that Makki Quran is given here in two sections. Very important. What's the basic call of Quran? That we will find in the third section, third ruku. What's the basic philosophy of Quran? What's the position of man in this universe? On what basis that position has been given to him? And what is the struggle of between evil and good that is going on? throughout the history, the struggle within a man, within the personality, there is a struggle always going on within our personalities between good and evil. Something is taking us towards evil and something wants to take us towards good, towards virtue. This is the struggle. A war is going on in the inner, you know, battlefield of our personalities. And then there is a war going on on the outside world. There is the philosophy of history of Quran. That this is a struggle between the forces of evil and forces of virtue and good. There's the forces of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on one side and the forces of shaitan on the other side. Dunya ko hai phir maar ka hai roho badan pesh. Iblis ne phir apne darindho ko ubhara. Allah ko paabar diye momin pe bharosa. Iblis ko yorab ki machinho ka sahara. So that struggle is going on. Satira kaar raha hai azal se taim roz. Chiraag e mustafavi se sharaar e bulah bhi. That struggle has been going on. But what is the basis of that struggle? That will be discussed in the fourth section, inshallah. And that those, those two sections, inshallah, we shall study in the next session. Barakallahu li wa lakum fil Quran al-Azim wa nafani wa iyaakum bil ayati wa zikil hakim.